YouTube. 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 Hey, YouTube. Hey, YouTube. you. You ever YouTube. seen? YouTube in the back. You ever seen this tube? Settle down. Oh, you. You. This tube. This tube. You ever? Don't seen dox a, yourself. What? When will I dox myself? I don't know. When will when, I dox myself? When did Jacob dox himself? When? When will I? No, I'm not going to. I don't have anything up on the screens. Okay. I don't have any doxables. Julia's kind of still looking in the background. Julia's still peeking. Oh, that's a very. Doxin. I'm not doxin. That's my favorite type of dog, the doxin. I'm not a doxin. Hello, everyone. Hello, Patreon learner tier draw classers. And future people watching this VOD. Jamie, hello. I'm not, I'm not doxing myself. You hello, can announce. Hello to the future. Hello to the I, future. I love to speak to the future. I have a message. You know, it, if we were like time travelers, and, and we kind of are in this instance, being from the past, speaking to the future is not an incredibly helpful position. Like, I can't tell them anything they don't already know. That's true. They know more than us. I wish they would tell me some things. Yeah. If you're watching this in the future, leave a comment. <laughs> tell, us, <laughs> tell us something. Tell, tell us, us something what's happened have known. in the past month since we recorded this. Because <laughs> we need to know it. Maybe we, we can take that know. info. Maybe we can, yeah, you can save us. Before it's too late. <laughs> it's too late, yeah. Uh, I doxed my shoulders with this tank top. Damn, that's true. Whoa. Shoulder reveal when? They've been exposed. They've been exposed. To the public. It was a humid day today. I had to go to the grocery store. Had to get the shoulders out. To prevent the sweat from overtaking me. It is nasty today, Jamie. Thank you for corroborating my claim. Nathan didn't jump in to, to defend me by saying it was nasty today. I mean, it's, it's New York summer, baby. Every day is nasty. It's all one big nasty mess. Have you been outside today, Nathan? No, but I've been in my kitchen, which is basically <laughs> the temperature that it is outside. The kitchen is the outside. Yeah, I've got the air conditioner over that way, and then every room away from you get away from the air conditioner, you get closer and closer to outside conditions until you get to the kitchen and bathroom, which are just outside 2.0. Just an indoor version of the outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. It, it's the outside, but you can wear less clothes. Yeah. So it's better. <laughs> so it's better in that regard. <laughs> Just and I a can little... Look at my, I can look at my neighbor's pool and be like, someday. Wish I could jump in that thing. <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah. Oh, Must be nice. A <laughs> little bit of New York weather talk for everyone. Oh, oh, Just to I get miss, us in the mood. I miss Seattle already. See, this is why, you know, you can trust us to tell you about how to make good content because we're, <laughs> we're doing it. Tying it back in. We're doing really it right good. now. This is it. This is weather. Two, two guys talk about weather. <laughs> Their local weather. Million views. <laughs> Top trending uh algorithm number one algorithm uh, number one everyone people can't stop watching engagement their their comment everyone's commenting their own weathers analytics and down in the comments below stats um did i already say thank you for the patrons this we're, we're doing this class because of y'all y'all who it's are pretty, here yeah yeah you're the ones, it's your generous contributions that allow us to do this class. Stop looking over here, Julia. Yeah. Don't look over here. Julia, you can look I over here. see if my screen was on screen. Your screen's half on screen. My screen's half on screen. Do you want me to turn the camera more? No, it's okay. Do you need that screen? It's okay. I can work. I can work. I I'm, can do work. I'm doing it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Now we just get a little That's bit it? of ponytail. Yeah, now we just get a little bit of ponytail and I'll just sit over here. A hint of Julia. I can do like this. Look at no that. No ponytail. No, just no ponytail. Just 
just to the back of the chair. Um, let's let's do the class. What do you think? I'm ready to learn. We've wasted enough time waiting for people to trickle in. Yeah, that's lesson one. Waste a little <laughs> bit of time. We, you don't want to hook anyone too soon. Yeah, you, the first five or so minutes of the video, you should really have, uh, it should be a lot of filler content. Teach us to be niche internet micro celebrities. That we can do. Oh, baby. That's right up our wheelhouse. Um, this is the the class. This one's on on YouTube. YouTube. I wanted to do one talking about the YouTube end of things rather than the art end of things. If in case anyone watching is maybe interested in starting a channel, um, this this will hopefully give you some info on things you can think about. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you, Nathan. Here you go. Take a look at this. So profesh. How to make a successful YouTube channel 100% guaranteed, impossible to fail. And that's, you can take that one all the way to the bank. If you listen to these steps, you will succeed and you it's you can't fail, it's impossible. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna start the slideshow. Look at this, I'm I got so some excited. transitions. Look at that. Ooh, a little fade in. Look at that, a little faded. Oh. This is Ooh. lesson one. This looks like a, a Pokeball. Lesson one, fade in. Lesson two, get the camera out of the way <laughs> so it doesn't block the text. <laughs> location, location, location. That's right. Of your face cam. That's, um, that... <laughs> that's, that's one thing you can learn. That's, what, um, that's in reference to when people say location, location, location. They're talking about your face cam. And only on, that. On YouTube. So the way this is gonna go is I've got a little presentation here. Um, as I was writing my notes for all this, I realized, um, and this might sound crazy to you, it's actually a really big topic. <laughs> There's actually like a lot to talk about and it can go from very broad to like incredibly specific, depending on what the needs of the, the learning person is. So my presentation is, is very broad. This is like, if I were to make a new YouTube channel today this is like the stuff i would think about the stuff i would carry forward that i've learned from drawfee wow. um so Speaking these are like of oh go ahead youtube oh just this is this is a little off topic i'm, I'm here to, to take you off topic take me off um Speaking of new YouTube channels, you, you told me this actually that today is uh, it's Drawfee Extra's birthday. Apparently, it is. I, I went was, into the back end and it was like, "Hey, happy birthday to so, Drawfee Extra!" So today, today live, not today future. Yes, today future? live. Yeah, it's Drawfee Extra's birthday. Everyone, please say happy birthday, Drawfee Extra. And, and it's um, also it's also our friend Terrence's birthday. Happy birthday, Terrence! Happy birthday, Terrence! Terrence is not Drawfee Extra. I know they're born on the same day. Yeah, and people might get though. suspicious, but it's not it's not true. Um. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into the first the first slide. Okay, this is the most important thing. The best thing you can do is start making videos and posting them. That sounds obvious. But I want to jump out ahead of it and like, yeah. and tell you that if you want to make YouTube videos, all this information I'm going to give you will help you, but it will not help you as much as the act of making videos right. and posting them and then like learning from the mistakes you make and moving forward from there. That's, that's how Drawfee did it. Yep. Like legitimately. Yep. Um, Drawfee was just originally Nathan and Caldwell in an open office. We posted videos for two years before we had like any sort of viral success yes and it was a, a regular posting for that amount of time yeah. we posted <laughs> bless you julia that was a cough i still bless i bless coughs. you so. bless coughs you're a cough That's, blesser i'm i'm starting <laughs> <laughs> this is a new thing I'm starting. Yeah. It's just to bless coughs. <laughs> I don't know why sneezes get all the action. That's a good point. Coughs deserve a bless as well. Um, um, but yeah, but yeah I, wa I wanted we, to jump on this right at the start to be we like. posted a video every day of the week for two years <laughs> before anything 
happened. And they were base. They were basically unedited. Yeah. And there I was didn't, no. I didn't even watch them back. They <laughs> there was that. and posted it straight away. <laughs> um, you don't have to do it exactly that way, but yeah. But you it, gotta yeah. You gotta start posting stuff. If you want it to do good, you gotta you gotta post stuff. You gotta post a lot of crap. It will give you a wealth of experience that you cannot get any other way. Mm -hmm. um, however, there's a lot of knowledge that can better set you up for success. And this I is where the, some of that. the stuff that we've learned in the seven to eight years that Droppy has existed yeah, um, on how to, to make it work a little bit better. Um, so we're going to get into that. So first thing you'll do if you're making a channel is to determine your channel topic. And uh, this is important because you'll want to find something that you're very passionate about and something that you um, can repeat. So like something that you can talk about in a lot of different ways, a lot of different times, so that you always have new videos to make if you intend to make like a, if you're doing a run at making a career of this, you don't want to pick a topic that you're going to run out of content for um, in like six videos. So for like Drawfee, obviously drawing is a pretty unlimited well to dip into because it's a creative act. But if like your passion was like a, a single movie, if your passion was um, we bought a zoo, the movie, you can probably <laughs> get, YouTube. yeah, <laughs> a zoo content. I'd love to see, <laughs> I'd honestly, I know you brought that up as an example of, of a bad choice, but now I really want to see someone make an entire YouTube channel that's just we bought a zoo content and see how long they can keep that going that would be like a good project in and of itself for sure like sort of an art piece yeah um but it's probably that would be like if you gave that topic to an experienced YouTuber I think they could pull it off and make it really mm -hmm. funny but if you're just starting out you probably don't want to go for like the avant-garde <laughs> sort of meta <laughs> meta take i would pick something that you can you can talk about like if your channel is instead of yeah. we bought a zoo reviews it's like you know movies <laughs> would probably be a better place to start and then you could even yeah. like narrow that to like bad movies or like yeah movies with silly titles yeah movies with who, who's in that is ben stiller in that i thought it was matt isn't it matt damon i think it's matt damon um, movie movies that should have starred Ben Stiller. Movies that you think would would have been better <laughs> if they had starred Ben Stiller instead of whoever was the actual star of that movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so I I was thinking that for the purposes of this presentation, we could like chat. You can tell me like a topic, and then I'll sort of cater the examples we come up with to that topic. So I'm going to give you some time to to tell me a, a channel topic. It can be like basically whatever. It can be stupid. We're just going to like show how we can we can twist any topic to to suit our dastardly needs. Mm, twist that topic. Yeah, we're going to twist the topic. And so reviewing YouTube review channels. <laughs> I mean, that probably exists, right? It sounds like the topic is We Bought a Zoo. I've not even seen We Bought a Zoo. I can't even begin to talk about it. I think they buy a zoo. I do think they buy a zoo in that one. Movies that should have starred Ben Stiller. <laughs> we, we should have seen this coming. <laughs> um, okay, let, let's use movies that should have starred Ben Stiller as our channel topic. This is a bad example, but it's going to be funny. Okay. Um... So the, one of the first things you'll want to think of when you're trying to make content about something are what, what I refer to as the two ends of the content spectrum. Um, one of them is content focused. So this is stuff that is focusing on the thing that you're making specifically. So like at the furthest end of this, it would be like a tutorial or like a review of like a piece of tech or something like that. Like there are channels that do like just microphone reviews or mm -hmm. speaker reviews. And when people go to those channels, they're going because they want to see the information in your video. 
um, as opposed to the other end of the spectrum, which is personality focused, which is when the content of the channel is basically you in some sense. Drawfee dips into this pretty heavily. Mm hmm. Um, where people are coming to watch because it's you, the person who's doing it, and they want to see what you're doing, uh, regardless of what that might be. Most channels, I would say, fall somewhere in the middle of these two extremes. I think on like the, the far end of personality focus would be something like a podcast type show, where it's like people talking, um, Anything like that, where it's like you're watching like three or four people having a conversation and people keep coming back to watch these four people have a conversation. That's like maximum personality focused content uh, right there. But there are pros and cons to each of them that I'll go over right now. So if we were doing the uh, movies that should have starred Ben Stiller topic and we went like really content focused, maybe it would be like sort of a no face cam um, voiceover, scripted voiceover type of thing where we're listing movies that should have starred Ben Stiller. Um, these types of like content focused channels can be faster growing. Um, I'm thinking specifically of when people like tie themselves to a specific property or like a video game or something like that. Like if you're a YouTube channel that talks about Marvel movies, you can grow your audience quicker because people know what Marvel is. And so they're more likely to click on what you're doing because they already are aware of something that you're presenting them. Um, so you can grow quickly with that sort of thing. Um, Fortnite is another big one. People that like made their fame on playing Fortnite, like that's just one game. But there are a lot of like streamers and YouTubers that are Fortnite creators. Uh, the downside to it is that your content will then live and die with the property that it's tied to. So if Fortnite falls out of favor, no one cares anymore. Um, they're probably not going to care about your content either. Um, and for that reason, they're more difficult to maintain uh, long term. Um, there are like, you know, people like move past it a lot of times and uh, by transitioning into more variety focused content. But that can be really hard to do because your audience is there for one thing. And now you're saying I'm going to start trying to do different things. And it can become a little more difficult. Um, and then on the other end, if you're more personality focused, um, like I said, Drawfee leans more in this direction. So I have more personal experience with it. Um, Drawfee is a pretty slow growing channel for how long it's been around. Um, but it has had like steady growth uh, because once you find an audience that likes you, they're more likely to continue showing up time and time again. Mm -hmm. And for a longer period of time, because whatever you're doing, they're like, oh, well, I want to see what Nathan and Jacob and Julia and Karina are up to. It doesn't really matter if I don't fully know what it is they're they're talking about or like what the topic is. Like, I trust that they're going to make it entertaining. Um, and then because you are your own content and this type of thing, it's easier to do a variety of things without abandoning the audience or making them feel like you're not doing what they came there for. And it's easier to continue long term once the audience has been built, but it's a lot harder to build that audience at the outset because they don't have something like content focus. They don't have something to grab onto that they already know, um, which is why I said most channels fall on a spectrum. Um, Drawfee does too, because like a lot of our biggest successes are things that are content focused in their presentation. Like, you know, Disney Dark Souls is our best performing video of all time. And then once you get into it, it's a personality focused type of content where it's very heavily focused on us rather than Disney and Dark Souls. Um, so oftentimes people will try to do a mix of both, like use recognizable content to get people in the door and then try to get them to like you <laughs> once they're in. Um, for the example of movies that should have starred Ben Stiller, you know, instead of being like 10 movies that should have starred Ben Stiller, like a watch mojo list, which is fully content focused, it would be like, you know, maybe something like why these 10 movies would be better with Ben Stiller in them. And then you're in the thumb doing like a thinking face 
pointing a, you know pointing a, at ben stiller a, a zoolander it's like zoolander face and you're making the same face as zoolander yeah you're but making then, the face and and it says we bought a zoolander we bought a zoolander in the thumb yeah we're gonna get more into titling and thumbnailing as we go <laughs> but this is an example of how to like signal to the audience that like i'm about to be in this video and you're about to be seeing my antics on this subject um, rather than like a top 10 list or, or something like that. Like, you know, top 10 anime betrayals versus these anime betrayals made me cry every time. Like these are like the two types of the same content. <laughs> Swamp Peanut just said, oh, he's Jerry Stiller's kid. <laughs> <laughs> so funny to me. You know, Ben Stiller. <laughs> you know, Ben Stiller. He's Jerry Stiller's was, kid. He was in like every movie in the early 2000s. <laughs> I know him as George Costanza's dad's actual son. <laughs> That's the only, the only tie I have to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I love that. Uh, okay, we'll go to the next the next slide here. Uh, try to find your ideal place on the spectrum. Search for that sweet spot where you're highlighting the best parts of the subject while also injecting your own personality and flair to get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, you want to have something people see and they go, their brain go, I know that. But then when they get in there, they're like, oh, this person's pretty like funny or charming or they have their own like unique way of approaching this topic that makes me want to come back and watch even when I don't recognize something in the thumbnail. Next, we're going to talk about scripted versus unscripted. There's pros and cons, believe it or not, to both of these types of content. Uh, and these are just all these all this stuff is stuff you can think about at the outset to be like, what would fit me best in my personality? Uh, scripted content is longer to produce, but you have a lot of control over the final product because you're writing it all ahead of time. You're doing takes. Um, so you can kind of get the best of all the pieces to make sort of your ideal version of a thing. Um, but it does minimize the unexpected, which can have both positive and negative effects. So like, you know exactly what's going to be in the video, but there's not a lot of room for randomness for like a funny happenstance or a topic that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Like that's probably not going to happen. Uh, and it can be more difficult to maintain a schedule if you're trying to maintain a regular schedule with scripted content because there's a lot more pre-production you have to do mm. before you make the actual thing. Um, and then we have unscripted content, uh, which is fast to produce, but you have less control over the final product. Uh, us speaking from personal experience, you know, when it's time to do a dropy, we sit down and we hit record and we do it. And then when we're done with it, that's basically what it is. Like if we, you know, weren't feeling it that day, if someone was off their game a little bit, there's not really anything you can do about that at that point. You can't like do another take of a imp fully improvised line. Um, so you don't have as much control. You, you have to rely more on your in the moment instincts, which can take a lot of time to develop. I can tell you that from personal experience. I feel like it took a long time before I got comfortable uh, talking on camera and doing drawfee and stuff like that. Um, but it can lead to content that you never would have produced in a scripted environment. I think everyone who watches us would know that oftentimes things happen in episodes that none of us individually could have come up with. Uh, but in, in the, the moment of all of us doing it together, you, you know, you get things like midnight crisis which none of us could have made the midnut crisis joke on our own. Like it took right. Nathan misspeaking. It took, it took me a lot of our jokes come from me, uh, my mouth just not making this the correct sound. But that's the, the beauty of it. Like we can't and invent that. No, that's my my subconscious is funnier than my conscious brain. Yeah. I mean, you had um, to say it weird and then I had to say midnight crisis and then Karina had to hear midnut crisis from that. Yeah. And then from there, we had a joke that we all laughed at for like five full minutes. Yeah. Um, so that type of thing, you can really only get an unscripted. Um, there's also content you can do that is a bit of a combination of both. Uh, this tends to be stuff like 
if it's like a challenge, like people that do like 30 day challenges or things like that, where it's kind of like vlog content that they then edit together and narrate. Um, that's an option you can do as well. So like you film a lot of unscripted content and then put it all together, narrate over the top of it with a scripted narration and kind of form the story that way. Um, and, and that's a way you can kind of get a little bit of both action, but that also does tend to take a long time to put together. So it really depends on what's going to work best for you. If you're the type of person who likes to really take your time and, and, and kind of needle away at something until it's done. Or if, you know, like me, you're more inclined to just want to like go now immediately do it. And whatever you have is what you have. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that, you know, with unscripted, it can also, depending on how much like editing you want to do with your unscripted stuff, it can, it can end up being a lot of, uh, a lot more post-production than scripted. Like if it's yeah. scripted, you, you already sort of have a roadmap for your, your post-production where it's like, we'll just make sure it fits the script and, you know, add in some, some graphics or whatever. Whereas it's unscripted, you have to make a lot more decisions in post-production. I feel like, um, yeah, because for sure. you, you can't, you, you, you skipped pre-production. So you, you're doing sort of pre-production and post-production all in post-production where it's just like, okay, here's the footage we have. Um, let's make it into something. Yeah, totally. And so that can be a downside or an upside depending on yeah. kind of how your brain works and what, what makes more sense to you. Exactly. Um, I, I feel like for us or for me, at least the way my brain works is I would much rather have something that I'm then like editing because it's easier yeah. to like take something that already exists and figure out how to make it better or how to make it its best self is than that, it is uh, to like write something from out that, of nowhere. That blank page problem. Exactly. Yeah. Much, I, rewriting is much easier than writing. Totally. And um, I suffer from that big time. Yeah. So we don't write anything. We just talk like idiots and then say, David, make it, <laughs> make David, it make help. <laughs> yeah. The next slide just says, uh, get David to help yeah, get David on the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone can just get David to help, right? I think that's how that works. They're not too busy. Uh, Becca Bo asked, have we ever done second takes? And correctly, Suave Peanut said the Sam Ugg episode of Drawtective season one, excuse me, was a second take. Uh, that's one of the only times we've done that. We've done it some other times, but uh, I'm not going to say which ones. You'll never know. But there are some episodes where uh, one person's drawing portion maybe was recorded maybe had to be re-recorded because we we thought about it after the fact and we're like you know what we talked about some stuff during that part that we don't actually want to have in the episode yeah because again that's that's part of the unscripted thing sometimes you're in the moment you're riffing and then you you take a some time away and you look back at it and you're like you know what that's not in line with sort of the voice of the channel yeah that we want you know, we were in a weird, there was a weird energy or a weird mood that day. And just like we said some stuff that like, eh, we could take that out. We could, we could take, we that can do out. that again and we better. Could try, we could try that again. Um, yeah, um, that has happened yeah. a few times, but it, but it is a, a you rarity. Don't know. You don't know where or when. Or no, which. you'd have and no I'm not idea. Gonna say. I'm not going to say. And it's, you it's can in, do it seamlessly. It's incredibly seldom. Yeah, it's rare. Uh, I it's would say probably 99% of our episodes are we just take what we did and, and do that. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to the next page, shall we? Uh, stick to one type of content. This is a place where a lot of people can get hung up. Um, once you've found that sweet spot for content that you enjoy making, keep making things within that wheelhouse for your channel. If you introduce too much variety, your audience won't have a good idea of what to expect from you, and it might lead them to not click on your videos, which is bad for the algorithm. Um, if you want to make another type of content, just make another channel to put that content on. Um, I know for a lot of people, they like hear this and they're like, well, that sucks. Why can't I do whatever I want on my channel? 
And you totally can. Um, there are people that ignore this, like notoriously ProZD um, ignores this. Um, let me bring up, I'll bring up ProZD's page real quick. No, go back, go back. Uh, let me get rid of that. What did I do? 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 What did, why is everything highlighted? What did I do? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and ProZD talks about this a lot, which I always think is really funny. Um, ProZD has said many times that he just doesn't care about maximizing his content or his reach or anything. And so ProZD will, on the same channel, post you know, videos that get almost a million views alongside videos that are board game reviews that get closer to like 20k views alongside videos that get 90k views. It's like all over the board. Um, but he said he just wants to make what he wants to make and he doesn't care how well it does. People can watch or not watch. It doesn't matter to him, which is very admirable to me. <laughs> A champ. Um, but it's incredibly this, powerful. <laughs> it's incredibly powerful, but this is not this is not the recommended way. He also has never made a custom thumbnail. Um, <laughs> right. Every thumbnail of his is just whichever whichever one of the auto generated thumbnails he likes the most. He he is an outlier, and you should not follow his example. Um, but <laughs> it can work for some him. people. Yeah, it can work for some people. But the the conventional wisdom is like you know if pro zd had a channel that was just for like the let's try all the foods and a different channel that was just for skits um it's likely that each type of content would perform better on each individual channel because the people that want to follow it will follow the channel that they want to see the content from and then they're more likely to click each video in the channel and that tells the algorithm that Every video this person posts on this channel gets a lot of views, so we'll keep sending it to everybody. Um, the way the algorithm works against you, how do I fix this? What I've done here? What you have gotta, I done here? You've got to go back to like presentation mode. I'm back. I'm back. It's fine. Just sweep. Um, there you go. How the algorithm works against you, and this is why we have Drawfee and, and Drawfee Extra. We don't just put everything on Drawfee. Um, because if you post a video to your channel that underperforms, you get um, dinged. You get dinged. It's like it, it looks at how many people your video it went to their feed, and if they did or didn't click on it, it within yeah. your subscriber base or like just people at large that it sends it to. And the more, the more that ratio skews towards people didn't click on your video when they saw it, the less likely it is to show your next video to the same amount of people. Because the algorithm has told them, oh, the people weren't interested in this. So if we did a video on Drawfee that was like, um, you know, examining in detail 10 different types of bugs, and it's just like wildly different than our usual content, regardless of how good it is or interesting. Um, it's likely that we would not get a large amount of views on on examining in detail 10 different types of bugs. And then our next video, even if it's like a banger, it's not going to go out to as many people. It's going to be more of an uphill battle to get to get back in the algorithm's good graces, essentially. I want to examine 10 different types of bugs and see what happens. I mean, we can. Here's keep, the you thing: keep saying things as as examples for bad ideas. And just, immediately, I'm just like, oh, we should absolutely do that. But here's the important takeaway, Nathan: we can do that, and we can put it on Droppy Extra. That's the reason yeah. Droppy Extra exists. It's no, for anything, put it on main. anything that doesn't fit the main channel. We have a second channel that we're not as concerned about optimizing. We're, you heard it here first. We're pivoting to bugs videos only. Um, <laughs> it's still going to be called Drawfee. It's still going to be called Drawfee. We haven't done anything remotely related to coffee. So, you know, we're getting rid of the, the draw part also. It's just a name. It's just a name now. And it's all yeah. about these 10 bugs. It's all about these 10 bugs. Number one, bunny.
<laughs> already already off to a bad start. <laughs> um, okay, it took us back. It took us back in the presentation. I never use this this app, this like PowerPoint web app. This is the first time I've used it, maybe ever. Wow. We need a, a draw class for how to use this PowerPoint web app. Yeah, yeah that's that's a separate one that that's I'll next, do. Next month's yeah. draw class. <laughs> Teaching Jacob to use PowerPoint web app. Uh, here's the wrap up of this sentiment. Try to find the perfect balance of something that you want to make and something that people want to see. Uh, if you skew too far in one direction, if you're just doing stuff that you want to make without regard for your audience, you're unlikely to pick up any viewers. Um, and if you're just focusing on what you think people want to see, you're not going to have enough of your own sort of passion and enthusiasm in it. And you'll likely burn out or not attract viewers because you're not actually like psyched about what you're making. You're just trying to like game the system. And it doesn't really work. I don't know of like any big successful YouTuber that just is like doing it out of a cynical sort of money grab mentality because it's not easy <laughs> to do and it, it's it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and so you got to make sure you're like psyched about it whatever it is that you're making and then once you find out what you're psyched about try to like get that 30 percent where you're like okay how can i twist this so that an audience is going to be psyched to see it uh okay now i want to talk about posting schedule Ooh. Ooh, baby the posting schedule there's two ways in my mind you can do this and the, and believe it or not they have pros and cons mm -hmm. uh regimented this is what we do we have a regimented posting schedule it's good for predictable sustained views most of our videos get you know over 200 between 200 and 300 k views i would say in the first yeah. like couple weeks or whatever. Yeah, right around there. Um, your Every so often we'll have a, a viral hit, but usually it's yeah, right, right in that range. Yeah, it's right in the range, and 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 we kind of know what that range is going to be, so we can count on it a bit. Um, you're likely doing this strategy though to get less views per video compared to like your subscriber count. Um, but you will also. Got a siren going by. It's the content police. You got too many views. Too many views. Too many views. You know how many views you were going in this zone? In this zone? You were over the views limit. Here's your ticket. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you're, you'll, you'll probably get less views per video than someone who posts less frequently but you'll probably also get more overall views per month. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Um, an advantage of that is that there's a lower risk for an individual video tanking and like completely ruining your finances. Like if you're counting on YouTube ad revenue to be your main source of income and you post like one video a month and then that video does really bad, you're like, how will I live? How will I live like this? Whereas if we post a video that underperforms, it's like, well, there's another video in two days. So who cares? That one's done. Throw it in the garbage. Um, I, I do think the regimented schedule, though, is also more likely to cause burnout because it becomes like a like a real grind when you're posting. For us, it's two videos a week. Some people do daily, which I think is insane. Yeah, um, only do that if you're not watching the videos back. Classic yeah trophy style. yeah you just got to get them out as fast as you can um but when you're doing two videos a week every week like year upon year it you really start to feel it after a while and it's it becomes difficult then to like take a real break because you you become uh dependent on the schedule the other option is a sporadic posting schedule these will often get higher views per video since the content is less frequent. So it's like if the creator you follow is only posting one video a month, you're probably going to watch that video because it's the only one you're getting. Whereas for us, if we post, you know, eight videos a month, people can be a little picky choosy. They'll be like, oh, I'll just watch the ones I'm the most interested in. Uh, this can lead to a better algorithmic performance since a high percentage of your subscriber base views each video. If you're getting big numbers on a video, the next time you post a video, it's probably going to go out to like your whole subscriber base. 
But like I said before, you have a high risk of a flop negatively impacting your overall revenue. So it's a little bit more risky in that sense. Um, and I was gonna look at a few channels to sort of illustrate this. Um, and I wanna get rid of this thing again. So when I think of like going from most sporadic to least sporadic, I'm just gonna show three channels. We'll look at uh, Jenny Nicholson first. The beloved Jenny Nicholson. Um, her videos do super well. I mean, we're seeing 2 million on the latest one, 4 million here, 9 million, 2 million, 4 million, 3 million. It's all in like the, the multiple millions, right? For the most part. But this video came out two months ago and this video came out 10 months ago. And then this video came out a year ago. So if you're like sort of averaging the amount of views over the amount of months that they take to produce, you get like a lower number, right? Like, so you're, you're getting, you're spreading the views thinner over the months, but relying on each drop to get millions of views. Right. She's putting, she's putting a lot of time and effort. She's making these hour plus that what the 9 million views one has a, is a feature length movie yeah, length. two and a half hours. Um, yeah, so, and, and they're all like scripted and edited and, and heavily yeah, researched, heavily researched. So it requires like tons of upfront, um, yeah, pre-production pre and post-production in her, in her videos. Yeah. Um, um, and also she has a uh, Patreon to help offset the like unreliability of the YouTube ad revenue from this type of posting, which a lot of creators right. like this will do as well um so then we'll take a look at draw fee that's us whereas that's our channel we post two videos a week so that's eight videos a month and if we look at these we see you know like i said oh, this is like thumbnails Ooh. 250 those thumbnails 230 220 230 pretty cool guy so if we like add up the amounts of views for the past, you know, eight videos approximately, it's like, you know, if we like do some sort of averages here and like say that these are like basically 250, that's like 500K, that's like 500K, that's like 500K. These three are like 500K. So it's about 2 million views-ish in in a single month for us and so like the number per video might not look as impressive but two million views per month and then if you extrapolate that over um you know the amount of time it would take like jenny nicholson to make a single video our views i believe like would tend to outstrip um the overall view counts of that model if that makes sense uh, and then if we look at an extreme example here, one of my favorite streamers and YouTubers, Northern Lion, who primarily posts clips, or not clips, but videos from his Twitch streams. Um, you'll see that the numbers, they vary pretty wildly. Like some are like, you know, 30K, 60K, 50K, 60K, 70K. But Northern Lion posts like multiple videos per day. So this is like an hour ago, an hour ago, three hours ago, four hours ago. That's four videos just today. And then how many are one day ago? That's five, six videos from yesterday. And these aren't short videos either. These are like, because you have to also factor in video length because that's part of, part of your like revenue from, from videos has to yeah. do with how long people are watching them, not just, um, how many views absolutely longer videos will get you better revenue um and if we like sort can, of yeah briefly tally up some of these numbers you know that's like 100k and then this is probably like it's around like 200k for that day i would say which is for a single day basically what we do on one of our videos but he's doing that amount of views every day sometimes more sometimes less so Northern Lion with less subscribers actually gets more views per month than we do. Even though each video, you know, doesn't look as impressive per number. 
So there's a lot of like calculus you can do here in terms of like what type of content you want to make. And, and like, he, and, and I just, just to ask is, are, is he editing these or are these just like stream clips? He doesn't edit at all. He just, okay. Each so one a is like of... a segment from a stream. So it's like what, whatever segment he's playing that game in on the stream, he just takes that segment, chops it out and then uploads it. Yeah. So he's like, he's a streamer who has a YouTube channel. Is yes. Sort of the, yeah. And, but yeah, his YouTube channel. Yeah. He's get he's getting the views. It's spread out over multiple videos, but he's, he's being very consistent with his uploads. And then he's also, he's not spending a ton of time on pre or post production. He's just like taking the content that he's already doing from streaming and turning that into YouTube views. Yes. They're and smart. <clears throat> that's another thing that, we can talk about if if people want, but it's a little bit more like high level in terms of like you have to have established yourself in order to start making this work. But this like idea of more passive income streams that you can generate, um, we we do it on Drawfee using like, you know, Drawfee Extra, for example, is is not edited. It's just like stuff from streams mostly. Yeah, um, but it's still Let's take a look at Droppy Extra. It still does pretty well. Like we got 70K, 70K, 80K, 122K, 100K. Like some of these do great. And this stuff is like, you know, Nathan has to make the thumbnail and upload it and title it. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> And put the and make sure that the auto generated mid rolls aren't like one every ten minutes or yeah. whatever. And make try sure and, of that. <laughs> try and put them in uh, sp spaces that uh, between drawings, and then doing the YouTube editing using YouTube's editor to cut out like the silence at the beginning of uh, the videos. As but well. compare that to what it takes to produce. A single drawfy video right and it's like yeah. a, a drop in the bucket like it's way less yeah. work than a full editing pipeline with renders and and uh you know the little the little uh bonus bits and images we put in and yeah and all that kind I'm, of stuff i'm never like going for virality with these i usually am just I assume people who are subscribed to Drawfee Extra are already Drawfee fans. So like the, the titles I'm, I'm choosing are much less uh, descriptive. Yes. Um, and then I'm just I'm just picking fun, fun thumbnails, which I love because they, images, they do yeah. great. Yeah. And uh, that's because the it's a very dedicated viewer base for this type of thing. But we wouldn't be able to like have Drawfee Extra be so successful if it weren't for already having the success of draw fee normal right so like as you develop you can find these ways to start getting more passive income like me and julia do it too with um secret sleepover society which is completely hands off for us the youtube channel um kaz our uh our editor slash channel manager for that kaz does all of that without us ever having any say in it whatsoever um and then we just pay kaz to do it and then and then that's it and so for us, it's like no extra work and then just like money comes in. So when you can do stuff like that, it's incredibly helpful. And uh, that's another another way you can do it, too. If you're if you're more of a streamer type, you should definitely also have a YouTube channel just because it there's no reason not to. Um, OK. We had a question. Becca Bo said, does the monetary value per view increase as a single video gets more? Or is it like one to one value from the stream view to Jenny's? Uh, as far as I know, the value doesn't increase the more views like the, va the value of a single view does not increase as the number of views increases. Like the, the value of a view is what it is for that video. And then the more views you get just adds it all together but it's not going to make the, the the single view more valuable is that correct as far as you know nathan i it sounds right to me i i truly don't know yeah <laughs> it's, it's not my department as far as i know that's how that works um i i could be wrong but to my knowledge that's how it works but i'm not 
I'm not a full expert on that exact if, thing. If someone <clears throat> from the future wants to leave a comment telling us in the past whether or not we're we're right, uh, let us know. Let us know. Save us from making this mistake. And then the we'll past. undo it. And then we'll undo it. <laughs> but I think I'm right. That's a, yeah, you said it with enough confidence. Yeah. Uh, but but the value of what that view counts for does vary wildly depending on factors completely outside of your control as a creator. <laughs> like sometimes Yay. sometimes ads are just like worth less for no reason. And so you'll get like the same amount of views but just make way less money. So that's pretty fun. Yeah, it's cool to essentially work for a company that you're not an employee of and so they don't have to tell you anything <laughs> no. about how anything works <laughs> but that's why we do patreon because yeah. patreon is our most reliable source of income by far and then youtube you know can fluctuate and do whatever it wants and it, we're yeah. not as affected by its whims yeah thank you uh, patrons thank again. you patrons once again um okay we'll get back into the slideshow here does rewatching a video give it more views? I, th I think so. Yeah, it does. It it sure does. You can rewatch a video as many times as you want. That helps us out every time. But don't do that thing where you like put a video on repeat and then like leave the house because then it will start counting that as like fake views. And th there's like a, a a way it tries to detect illegitimate views. So you can't really game it in that way. You got to be enjoying it. It can detect your enjoyment. Yeah. I think it's just like this person probably didn't watch Drawfee's Poggers ass Yeehaw stream 11 times in a row today. Like, I don't think they did for I real. That's what I do every, <laughs> every day, every Sunday <laughs> instead of going to church. <laughs> that, that is the church. Yeah. Um, okay. Times. Poggers ass yeehaw. We're gonna talk about title and thumbnail now. This is one of the most important oh, things. Perfect segue that you can. Ass yeah. Stream. <laughs> this is one of the most important things you can focus on when you're making. Other than like the video you make has to be good. That's part one. But if the video is good and your title and thumbnail is bad, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it will just take your work and and essentially just shoot it into outer space for That's all it matters. Sad. The sad truth. It's the sad reality, but it's its own type of game, titling and thumbnailing. Yeah. And this is kind of where we've landed on it um, after all these years. And it kind of follows the general trend of how most people do it to get success. Um, but you want to aim to hit the perfect ratio of descriptive and intriguing between the title and thumb combined. So it doesn't always have to be like, the title is descriptive and then the thumb is intriguing. You can like switch it or like have a little bit of both. And I'll show examples in a second to make it more clear. But um, clarity should be your primary focus. The viewer should know at first glance exactly what it is they're getting. So you want someone to like read the title and look at the thumbnail and not have any questions. You want them to know what's going to be in that video, essentially. Um, the way I like to think of it is that it's a promise that you make to the viewer that this will be worth their time. And then when they watch the video, ideally you keep that promise to them that it was worth their time, in fact. Um, but you, you got to package it in a way that people will see it and and yeah. and want to know what's going on in there. You want to you want to bait the click without being clickbait. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to get that click. You want to entice, but you want to reward instead of just having them be like, oh, yes, you exactly. Got, you got me. Uh huh. That's where I feel like a lot of people misuse the term clickbait because they'll think that any title that uh, tries to get you to watch the video is clickbait, but it's like it's only clickbait if you don't deliver on the promise of the title. Right. If you deliver on the promise of the title and the thumbnail, then you, you did not bait anyone. You just gave them what you said you were going to give them. Um, and we'll, we'll look at some thumbnails real quick. You're going to have that one of the guy standing in front of the, the balls. The guy standing in front of the balls? Remember that video? It was the guy's like, why are there all these balls in the reservoir? And it got like a gajillion views. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I believe you. I'm going to look. I'm going to find it. Yeah, you find it. Um, I'm going to pull up Ludwig. I think Ludwig is a good example. 
uh, of, uh, of times, things and go. again someone who is primarily a streamer but then actually has like full edits of the segments to make them like into youtube videos oftentimes with like additional narration or like ins and outs i found the video what's the video it's called why are 96 million black balls in this reservoir and it has 88 million views. <laughs> Well, I have to look at it now, and it then I'll come back. It has almost as many views as, as there are balls. Why are how many? 96 million. 96 million black balls. Wow. There, there it is. I mean, that is a pretty perfect... Because I want to know why. Yeah. And, like, I see from the image that they are, in fact, there. Yeah. And I'll, And I'll tell you right now, if you look just below it, and you see why this reservoir is covered in 96 million black balls, I see why this one didn't perform as well. And the answer is the thumbnail. In this thumbnail, you can see a better sort of picture of what's really going on here, that the ocean is not entirely filled with black balls. This dude up here, he set it up so it looks like it's black balls as far as the eye can see to the horizon and back. This, this looks more intriguing. I'm like, that doesn't even look real. This looks like a real thing that probably has a purpose, and so I'm less likely to look at it. This one, though, does have 27 million views. LA throws 96 million shade balls at its water shortage, and it's mesmerizing. And then 28 million views for can you swim in shade balls? <laughs> <laughs> can you? <laughs> you don't know you don't know you gotta, you gotta click on the video to find out but this one they they missed the mark because this is only a year ago and they only got 186 views on 96 million shade balls on drinking water reservoir is this safe 96 million black balls <laughs> they tried to recapitalize on it you know yeah, the, these people just, were the, way too late to the, the interest had had already they already had watched 88 million people know <laughs> about the balls already. They We're learned not, about it three years they ago. They already learned about it. <laughs> oh, anyways. <laughs> this is like an example of, it's very much like these are YouTube thumbnails that he does, but they're very yeah. effective. Um, and also, the, it's the title thumbnail combination. Like, I let my stream buy anything they want for 90 minutes is a pretty compelling title. And then you've got the sad guy with the credit card and the Jojo titty mouse pad. <laughs> and you're like, if they're buying the Jojo titty mouse pad, what like else? what else are they going to buy? And like, you want to, you want to find that information out, right? Yeah. And then if we look at some of these other ones, um, this one did gangbusters, how I got scammed and lost a hundred thousand dollars. And all the all it takes on a thumb for that one is the sad guy with the minus one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. But the the title on, on, alone is enough to make you want to know. That's a lot of money to lose. I wouldn't recommend that you get scammed and lose a hundred thousand dollars to make a YouTube video. But if that happened to you already, then that's a great thing to talk about. Oh yeah, people want to people want to do some Schadenfreude. Yes. Um, so all of these and they've got like youtuber face big time But youtuber face the problem with it is it does it does work to a degree Yeah, because you're seeing the person you recognize. This is where I'm, what I'm talking you about gotta have, You got to have the right bone structure for youtuber face. Yeah, and, and you don't have to go full youtuber face but it is helpful if you're if you've already watched this person before and then you see their face again <laughs> Your brain goes. Oh, I remember them I know that face. I know that face. I watched their video and I, I liked it then. And now I'm seeing the face again. And so I will click again to see what else they're up to. I love the progression of I buried $100,000, go find it. And then how I got scammed out of $100,000. <laughs> it's a different $100,000. <laughs> it's not the guy, same. This guy is just... <laughs> made of hundred thousand dollars he's is... up and down a hundred thousand dollars just all the time yeah um this one another great title combo i forced a british man to try every fast food burger and then you got the british man and the burger and a tier list and like you if you if you live in america you're gonna want to know what he thought about it um yeah it also helps that connor is another big streamer so that's another recognizable face yeah 
Um, you know, but the, you don't have to have a recognizable face to make this work. It's more just about like showing your own personality and then showing clearly something that's in the video that is intriguing to look at and then having a title that makes people want to find out more about whatever it is you're, you're talking about. This is the way, or you put 96 million black balls into a reservoir. That's the other way. Yeah. I mean, you don't even need to put the balls there. You just need to find the reservoir with the balls. But that was, that was it's too late. The window's closed. The window's that closed. One. That's not getting views anymore. That's no, no longer doing numbers. If you had done that three, if you'd done that four years ago, ooh, you could have, uh, you could have jumped the line on that. Absolutely. On the balls, but, yeah. You know. Um, and then the, this presentation is almost over. We'll get to questions after that. Uh, to, to wrap up this sort of like general strategy segment, growing your audience from here is primarily a matter of consistency, luck, and the ability to self-analyze accurately. Um, and I think this is where it's like tough to quantify because it just takes a really long time and it's also not guaranteed. But I think where a lot of people uh, fail is that they they don't know how to like look at what they've done. Hi, Joy and say like, what's different between what I did and what these other successful people did? And, and how can I make what I did do a similar thing? Or even just to look at it and say like, try to look at like what you produced objectively and say, is this, like, would I click on this if I saw it? Like if I didn't know what was in the video, would I click on it and watch it? Um, so that's where like the self analysis comes in and it took it took us a really long time to even start doing this Like Nathan said, you know didn't even watch the videos again at the beginning yeah. And the titles and thumbnails were just kind of like I had a whole other job that I was doing Yeah, and this was just a, a extra thing and It was then, a different time. It was a different time and uh even though the stuff I was making for YouTube were getting way fewer views than the articles I was illustrating for College Humor, the comments on the Drawfee videos were so much nicer. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I want to be doing this. I want to be doing this one. That really was like the driving force at the beginning. Like, the people who like what I'm making, I want to be making stuff for them, not the people who hate everything I make. The people who hate me so much. <laughs> they don't even they don't even like know me. They don't even like comment on the drawings. They're just like angry that this article exists and has a woman in it or something. Yeah. It's like nothing we can do about that. Yeah, sorry. Sorry I drew a lady <laughs> and she talk. But uh it you know and and I think that's well, it's an example of like, you, you know, Drawfee started from a place of like sort of passion of just like wanting to do it. Yeah. And because it was fun and it was with our friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were we were lucky to have sort of a, a built in way to build an audience, which was, uh, you know, pulling from the college humor audience. Absolutely and making it its own separate thing so that it was only people who wanted to move over to our channel did. Um, so it wasn't like, again, if we had just, if, if we had just posted Drawfee on College Humor's YouTube channel and hadn't made our own separate channel, it probably wouldn't have been as good because you would have gotten all the people who are like, this isn't what I, subscribed for yeah it goes back to what i said about dividing your channels right the people that wanted college humor they, they wanted college humor skits and sketches yeah. that's what they yeah. wanted from college humor and anytime it was not that they were like this isn't what i want from college yep. humor understandably so yeah um and that's why in order to avoid that Droppy moved to its own channel where the people that wanted that could go there and not have to uh get a bunch of other things alongside it that they didn't want. Yep. Uh, and then I just got, I got Q and a time. Um, I've got, and this is what I was saying earlier. Like there's so many specifics, but I don't really know what people are interested in hearing about. So I don't want to like go deep into something that no one really cares about. Um, 
but I've got some questions from Twitter and I'll probably start with one of those and then I'll just take questions from the chat if anyone has them. Hi, Julia. Julia's strong arming. Yeah, Julia's so tea. strong. I'm gonna stop the share for now. Getting tea? Can I have tea? Yes, I would like some I'll, tea. I'll have some tea. Nathan wants tea too. Nathan, what kind of tea do you want? Nathan. Yeah. What do you eat? What do you You got Nathan. any chai? You got any chai? I can't hear you. Nathan wants to know if you have any chai. Yeah, we have chai. You want some chai? Yeah. I'll make you some chai. <laughs> you'll, make, you'll make it for me? Th thank you. Joy, thank you want you. something? I want, uh, I'll actually, I'll have some chai. You want some we chai? We do have chai, I think. Yeah, right? Yeah, give me, give me one of those. Give me a chai. You know, Joey, just you make some? the make the chai for Jacob, and I'll just enjoy it. I'll show it to you. Yeah. You don't need to make me my own. I think it'll be cold by the time I get over there. <laughs> what if I just? <laughs> It'd be a funny idea for a stream. It's like the start of the stream. I call a a lift and see if I can make it to you guys' apartment before the stream ends. I think but you'd I be keep, able to. I keep the uh I keep the 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 webcam up. It's just an empty <laughs> It's an empty seat until I show up at your place. That'd be a good bit. I like that's that. Fun, that's just a fun idea. Uh I'm going to find some questiones here. Yeah. And and people in the chat feel free to toss in questions if you have them as well. Jacob, I assume you you either put your your discord in streamer mode or or turned it off for the stream i i closed it okay why well, is there is there stuff happening oh it's just like since the stream has started is just been it's been the most active just part. very constant yeah don't worry julia julia and karina and george and david are are taking care of it they're just going off in there they're they're just they're just doing work they're having they're having combos talking about it. I've been getting the blips. I've been I've been eyeing it this whole time. So uh, here gonna, here's a question. You're open it up and see like hundreds of new. I can't wait messages to just, do that. Just prepping you for that. But first, I'm going to ask this question about the YouTube process. OK. Um. Let's see, uh, Liam slash Autumn at Ukai Fish said, I'd love to hear stuff about time management because I know you guys have mentioned doing batch recording and streaming on the same day, which seems like a great way to go about things. Uh, yeah, time management is pretty crucial for YouTube YouTubing, mm -hmm. especially if you're operating on a schedule like we do. Yeah. Um, because if if one of us doesn't, do our time management good enough then everything kind of falls apart yep so it for us i think it's like specifically because we work with multiple people yeah and like everyone is relying on each other to get things done i think that's a big part of it yeah um because we all I, have differing yeah. levels of like innate time management with julia being the best and and me and Nathan probably somewhere at the bottom. I'll take I'll take the bottom slide. I've, if okay. you're at the bottom, then I'm in, I'm third place. Yeah. And then I think it's Karina and then Julia. Yeah. Then David's in there too somewhere. David's in there. Um, but it's it's more like you know, Julia will get stuff done instantly when it needs to be done. You get your renders done fast though. Yeah, though I I had to make a really active effort to yeah. to do that. That was a I was pushing for that. Yeah, well you did it though. But, I was impressed because I'm trying to get better about not being last minute. But it's hard. I think if if I was running like a solo channel, I would be way worse. Yeah, it definitely helps to have people whose opinion of you you care about uh, involved <laughs> because. Uh, it's a much stronger motivator than if I was just doing this by myself. Yeah. If you're the type of person that needs an external motivation, then I recommend making a channel with someone else if you can. 
um, or finding some other way to like hold the what's a phrase for like holding I was gonna say hold the axe above your head but I don't think that's a phrase the, the sword of Damocles d d get the sword of Damocles and point it at your damn self find a yeah. way to do that point it at your Damocles self uh Oh, Zandrubert says, when starting out, do you need to respond to all comments? Does it boost the engagement? I remember when Drafi first started, um, Caldwell made a point of uh, responding to only the most positive comments. Um, right, yeah. We would we would ignore... I, would, I, I have um, fucked up internet brain, and so my instinct would be to like you know, want to get snarky with the negative comments. And Caldwell was like, no, we must choose the, the, the path of light. <laughs> we should we should reward the people who are who are saying nice things. And then we also did the cheat of, uh, of course, making uh, making all of those early videos entirely based on audience suggestions. So giving the comment section um, sort of gui guide rails Thank you. like if you want to get noticed there's a there's an easier way than being terrible and it's just to suggest us a drawing prompt yeah and so the comments filled with drawing prompt suggestions instead of uh people being horrible which just sort of made them a nicer place to be and then with caldwell encouraging just like the, the compliments and the people being like, hey, these these guys are pretty funny, or oh, you guys are so creative. Um, it just sort of be it it fostered a, a nicer community uh, quickly. So I think that yeah. that's a good, you know, I I definitely would recommend if if your channel is smaller, uh, responding to positive comments, encouraging that kind of engagement, and then also providing, um something for people to comment encouraging a type of comment whether it's suggestions for other videos you want to see or if you know you're doing video essays about you know a certain topic like asking like you know what are, what are your thoughts on on this you know keep it respectful but you know keep giving people a prompt for what they should comment uh you're just going to get a, a better crop of comments you're going to get a higher ratio of comments that are on topic and related to the video uh than people who are just like attention seeking or trolling or whatever uh yeah and that's just going to make the comment section a nicer place and people are going to feel more comfortable engaging there in that space and that's just going to make it it's it's a it's a virtuous cycle because then yeah. you get more engagement from people who like a more positive environment which will make the environment more positive which will get more people who are interested in a positive environment and uh you know you're gonna bury those those assholes you're gonna you're bury gonna fully, those assholes you're never gonna fully get rid of the assholes but you can bury them yeah you can bury them under good stuff i fully agree i think that was um the the idea to only respond to positive comments was uh ended up being such a huge player in developing yeah. our notoriously good community um and you know i don't think caldwell knew at the time exactly how influential that idea would become but i would recommend doing that on your own channel if you make one if you get comments yeah. that are that are good then interact with them if you get comments that are negative then just don't just ignore it and now youtube has the little the little heart button so you can um, people, people, everyone can see if the, uh, original poster liked a comment and it'll yeah. have that little heart underneath. And so I see that a lot on, um, like deep blue ink does that where they'll, they'll just, um, they'll just heart basically every, every positive comment, which yeah, is most great. of them. And then and you so just then you, like get a little badge just, of yeah, honor. You just, you just see a little, see a little sea of hearts in the, in the comments. And it's like, oh, this is just people enjoying the video saying nice stuff and then the nice stuff is being in turn appreciated by the person who posted and it's just it's just nice yeah it's it's really good 
And I think it's important to keep in mind too, when you're starting out that it's a very small percentage of your viewership that will actually comment. Um, Cause like, you know, if, if our video gets like 250,000 views, we usually have like what, like a couple thousand comments. I can, I can pull up the back end right now and take a look. Let's yeah. just take a look. Let's just right. take a look and you can tell me. I can tell you exactly how many comments there have been on recent videos. But it's Here definitely it a small percentage. Yeah. So you shouldn't take what the comments say too much to heart because the vast majority of your audience is just watching the video and going, nice. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. It's between it's between a thousand and the Willie episode got over two thousand comments, but uh, usually it's between a thousand and two thousand comments, which, um, which is like one percent or yeah, something. Yeah, and then the more views the video has, the more comments. So like our uh, artists redraw their old portraits has around um, what half a million uh views and there are there are around five thousand right comments. so it tends so to it's... fall in right at that ratio huh yeah is that one percent or is that ten percent that's one percent that's one percent yeah one so percent of the view around one percent of the views are comments so there you go give, give or take the vast majority of the people that watch your stuff even if you have like lower view counts if you have like a thousand views you'll probably get like 10 comments um so just keep in mind that it's like, it's already a person that would comment on a video that is commenting on the video. So if they say something negative, that means that they're already a very tiny subset of like the people that will actually comment. And then they're even in an even tinier subset of people that will go out of their way to leave a comment and then make that comment negative. And if you think about what type of person that would be that would do that, it's likely not anyone that you want to know or hang out with. Um, so yeah. it, you, it's, it always hurts to get bad comments. There's like no getting around it, but you, if you can think about it this way, it can kind of like dampen the blow a bit. Yeah. And it's just, you know, you can't control what people are going to say about your stuff, but you can control how you react to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that was something I had to learn that Caldwell taught me and I've, I've never forgotten yeah, it's something everyone I've, has to learn that does this I've type been of tempted. Thing. Ooh, ooh, I've been tempted. <laughs> Sorely tempted. But it's, that's the it's, devil, Nathan. It's never it's never better unless you're like the kind of person who like loves debate and like wants to really get into it and like that's your whole thing is like trying to like convince people and like change their mind or whatever. And like that's that's the whole bent of your channel and your online persona and you and and you know how to engage with people who are like trying to piss you off without like taking the bait and just responding like calmly and clearly to everything they say. It's it, it's it's almost always going to be better to just not respond. Yeah. To because at, at worst you're highlighting. Right. You're giving them what they want, which is attention. And then if anyone agrees with them, they're likely to come out of the woodworks and now you're yeah. fostering an even more negative space. Yeah. When you so, can just ignore people, if you ignore them, they don't exist. Yeah. And, and you can highlight the people who are, who are being good. Cause again, it's a, it's a small percentage of the people watching the video who, who have taken the time to comment. And if they've taken the time to say something nice, Ooh, reward that. Tell them you appreciate it. I'm seeing an error that's saying that there might be some buffering. I don't know why that would be. So if if you're getting any buffering, let me know in the old chat. The old chat, as we say. I'm, I've got the video pulled up on my screen. And it looks fine to me. I don't have the audio going well it says youtube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming i don't know what that sentence means yeah, i feel like we're looks, giving it plenty of video it looks it looks smooth on my end but i'm a little right. behind well we'll we'll keep an eye out comments let us know seems fine to me great Suzanne Druber. perfect Thank you. 
Uh, we had another question from Harpo the Marks who asked, how do you guys deal with keeping up with trends to feed the algorithm, especially if the trend is something you don't necessarily care about? Uh, we, we don't really. No, there's no way. It's like, first of all, it's impossible for us to make a video quickly enough to hit a trend while it's still active. That's just how our channel works. If you're, if you're making a channel that's more based around responding to trends, then you have to be the type of person who can do a really fast turnaround on something like that. Yeah. Like there are Usually, channels like that. Yeah. There'll be like game news that comes out and like 10 minutes later, someone will post like a full trailer analysis breakdown. And I'm like, how did you even have time to watch the trailer? There are like streamers I watch who will, they'll just like, record a reaction video during their stream if an announcement comes out they'll just be like hold on i'm gonna make a youtube video and just like record it and post it while still streaming which is that's um, that's the hustle yeah which i mean the, yeah. the closest we get to doing timely stuff is like on stream yeah like when dolly was was making the rounds like we recorded a video but there was no way we were going to get it out in time so we we also did a stream for that yeah so that's kind of, we, we try to focus on things that are evergreen, evergreen content is the phrase that someone yeah. could go back and watch at any time, even like years from now, and it would still be enjoyable. And then every so often we'll just nail it. We'll just like record a video. And then by the time we're posting it, there like is just news coming out. I mean, that's why we do so many Pokemon videos is just, there's always Pokemon news. Yeah. You so never know. So Every so often we'll post a Pokemon video like right when they do a Pokemon announcement and it's like, oh, heck yeah, we got it. It might just hit. Yeah. But yeah, that'll depend on what type of channel you're making largely. Uh, I got some more questions in here. But yeah, if you can do quick turnaround, you know, definitely. And, and you're interested in stuff that's trending, like, you know, go for it. Take, take any avenue you can to get those views. If you can like record a video and get it edited and posted same day or next day. Um, yeah, I think paying attention to, to trends uh, is, is certainly a, a good thing to do. Uh, I've got a question here that I have a, a specific answer for. Uh, Crystal Rose asks, how do you build following when you don't have any? i.e. financials such as how much ad space and how much it costs, what's the best way to manage it, and if you need to target specific demographics. Um, we, we, didn't, we haven't done any ad buying mm -hmm. for Drawfee. Um, we just did sort of, well, we had the, the benefit, like Nathan said earlier, of starting with a small audience and not no audience because we right. were able to spin off from the College Humor channel. So there were like some people there from the beginning. Yeah, that's, I'm always a little like, because like I I don't know, uh, I I haven't had to build a, a channel from 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 actual zero. We because yeah, we had that that initial boost. Um, I will say there's a cool video I watched. I we we were looking at Ludwig's channel earlier, but he did a video a while back where the goal of it was that he wanted to prove that YouTube wasn't luck, and so he wanted to make a new channel not tied to him at all and then make a video and then have it get like a certain amount of views in a certain time frame. Um, and so what he did and I'll, you, you can find the video. I'll, I'll show you the thumbnail of it. Um, what he did is he made a video about a streamer, like about how another streamer got their success and then <laughs> made a super grabby title and thumbnail. He got like someone else to voice over it so it wouldn't be tied to him. But then what he did is he went to the streamer while they were live streaming, donated bits with the link saying, this guy made a video about you with the link to the YouTube video. And then the streamer took the bait and watched it on his stream in front of like 20K people. And then the video like, you know, blew up from there. So there's like strategies you can do like that. Yeah. If you like know your audience and know your topic, you can kind of like game a streamer into watching your video <laughs> live on their stream. Yeah. Um, but that's like pretty niche, but I thought it was a pretty creative way to go about like building an audience from zero to 
you know, suddenly a lot of people have seen your content and if they liked it, they're, they're likely to subscribe. Um, so in anywhere you can like get your stuff like that is really helpful. I know we've gotten huge boosts from like the dark souls, uh, subreddits. Oh yeah. Whenever we do like a dark souls one, some of those hit really big on the souls subreddits and we gained a lot of subscribers from that because they just love content related to souls. So they'll go check it out kind of no matter what it is, if it shows up. So if you're like operating within like a fandom or a niche and you like are able to post your stuff or have someone else post it, because oftentimes it works better, like I said, when you pretend it's not yours. Yeah, some some guys, some guy made a video about you. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, um, yeah. so the there's like strategies like that you can do if you're starting from like absolute zero. Because yeah. you just want to get like, if you can you start get, getting like a handful of regular viewers, then it it just gets easier to grow as you yeah. as you gain. But that first step is always really hard. Um, oh, I was going to find the video. Let me share my screen again. And then and we'll again, go like over the, here. And, and this, this all goes back to uh, the initial point about like, you should just, you know, be, be making videos. Because, you know, what, what, you, you're not going to have like a hit every time, especially when you start. But if yes. you... If you're trying these strategies and eventually you do get a video to, uh, you know, hit a fandom or a streamer or some, some way you like, you're able to boost views on a video, then if any of those people go to check out your channel, oh, you already have a bunch of other videos there for them to watch too. Totally. And then they can get a better sense of, of your channel and then... You know, it's not just like, oh, this person just made one viral video and that's it. It's like, oh, they've got a whole channel and, oh, they've got more videos of topics that are similar to this one and I'm interested in them and now I'm watching them and now and now I'm a fan and now you've you've got this this fan community and then you can, you know, you can you can go to Patreon or, you know, use that small community to supplement your finances while you're continuing to grow the channel so you're not like... um it yeah like yeah it, it, like like that you know like that like that uh this is the video it's called i made a secret youtube channel to prove it's not luck that's uh um, that's a benefit of uh you know we we started at college humor we we got that built-in um starter audience but you know we 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 couldn't start a patreon while we were under a, a corporate umbrella so if you're starting yeah from scratch you have the benefit of like make a patreon or any sort of crowdfunded uh support direct support system that you want uh from the get-go from the jump yeah totally do do all do all of that hey if do all want, of that if, if you want if you want if that's what you want to do you don't have to do any of this yeah, I think the the important message, like the first message I said, was you already have to want to make a lot of videos. Yeah. And keep making videos. If you don't want to do that, then you cannot do this job. No. So that that desire has to already be there, and you already have to. There's there's no way to do it without making a lot of videos. You that's, gotta make a lot of videos. You gotta want to make a lot of videos. That's what it boils down to. It doesn't have to be, again, we talked about all the stuff, the cadence, you can make a few videos over a longer period of time, but it's going to end up, it's going to end up being a lot of videos. If you want it to be successful, yeah, like successful enough where it's your job, it's going to end up being a lot of videos. No two ways about it. How, how many a lot of videos is depends on more which it, it never which, ends is the thing <laughs> yeah always more is the answer yeah exactly um all right some more questions we got i just thought this one was funny the f stands for fear asked why should somebody start a youtube channel and are there situations where it would be a bad idea yeah yeah um you should start a youtube channel if like we said you want to make a lot of videos and that's something you enjoy doing and it would be a bad idea 
sometimes it's a bad idea for people if they have certain like personality types like if you have if you get like addicted to it the work life balance can truly go yeah out the window cuz you can be working on it all the time there's like no limit and because you like directly see benefits from the uh -oh. more you work uh oh it you it's just uh yeah sometimes for certain people there's just no reason to stop and so you end up yeah just doing it just doing content all the time even when i'm not actively working on drawfy i feel like i'm thinking about drawfy yeah same the majority the majority of the time i'm conscious i'm thinking about drawfy at least a little bit <laughs> yeah so that's a major downside for sure yeah if you don't want that in your brain don't do it if you want to like go to work and then come home from work and then not think about work until you are back at work again then this is not the career path because you can't no you can't do that it'll just always be there yeah waiting for you at all hours of the day and night like a grim specter and I'll say this, I mean, this is something from, uh, this was true when I, when I was doing like live improv too. If you're doing unscripted content, you better believe you're going to be thinking about the stuff you could have said better in yep. every video. <laughs> yep. I can't speak to scripted content. I imagine it's similar where you're like, oh, I wish I'd, I'd written that better or whatever. But when it's unscripted, it's truly like, oh, wow after after you're done it's my brain is just like oh you could have said that oh that would have been a funny thing to draw it's yeah it's a nightmare <laughs> it never it never ends truly <laughs> no i love i it, not i i love i love making draw i love making the stuff making the stuff is great it is good it's also it's, the worst thing that's ever happened if you to don't, me <laughs> if, if you don't want your brain to do that yeah then then don't do it yeah if you don't mind that then go for it then go for it yeah there are upsides and downsides to any career path very much so and the, um, the upsides to this one are it can offer you a lot of a lot more freedom and you get to do something that's fulfilling creatively ideally and and i and you know i'll, I'll add this as well that like especially when you're starting out um it's it's difficult to you know you put a lot of time and energy into making something and if it it underperforms like you need to prepare yourself for videos to do worse than you think they deserve to do um yeah. and because it it it's hard it like it feels bad when you make something that you're really proud of and you think everyone should like and it just it just misses it just like doesn't get views for what there's so many factors outside of your control and then you know some of it is in your control and you need to be able to objectively analyze like what you could do differently um and if you're the kind of person who's like just going to be devastated every time a video doesn't do as good as you want it to it maybe uh it maybe you should consider trying something else yeah that'll be uh, really tough where if that's put, your mindset yeah if you're you know you're gonna be putting a lot of yourself into what you make no matter what um but you need to be able to like separate yourself from that when you know reacting to how well a video does and not take it personal or not or at least try, you know, be yeah. able to, cause yeah, you, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to encourage people to go out there and like put themselves out there and then feel like shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, you, you will, you'll feel a little like shit sometimes, but you have to be prepared for that. Uh, so as long as you mentally, emotionally prepare yourself for situations where, uh, you feel like your work is being uh, underappreciated, then then go for it. Yeah, and it's it's like sometimes you you kind of just have to if you think you w might enjoy doing this, you kind of just have to try. Right. And yeah, then it, if it if it happens and you and it truly devastates you, 
you can you can learn that lesson you can walk away like, you always i won't i yeah. won't judge you you can walk away uh it, it, it all depends on your how good you are at dealing with that stuff or yeah. if you think you can consistently have that happen to you and you'll be okay at the end yeah. of it which sometimes takes some learning to yeah, do you can you can tough you can build a, a thicker skin I've seen it. I'm I'm a I'm a thin skinned little little crybaby, but I do it. So we all do it. Know, it's we, possible. We've it's definitely just, all grown harder shells over the yeah the years of doing this. Um, yeah. Next question. Uh, we got one here that says from Christina says do you feel like youtube analytics helps or hinders you what produces better results following the data or following yourself uh i i think that like most things i've put forth here today um it's a little bit of both things you kind of can't because here's the thing about following the data the data is constantly changing in ways that you can never know it, ways right. that are completely obscured to you as the creator on YouTube. We don't know what the data is. Like the data we have is we made this video and it did super well. But if you make a similar video like a week later, it could do really bad. And you're like, I don't know. What's the data telling me here? <laughs> what does this data mean? What Basically what the data tells you is that sometimes it do really good and you aren't sure why. And sometimes it do really bad when you were so sure it was going to do really good based on what you right. had extrapolated from previous data. So it's it's tough. I mean, it's like you you definitely want to keep an eye out for like major flops. I think like if you do something and it really does poorly compared to everything else, I think it's more helpful to like know what to avoid. Mm -hmm. than to try and like chase the highs of a well-performing video yeah i think that yeah, makes sense you you can't really chase the highs it doesn't really work that well like if you do a video on a subject and then do another one on the subject it will never do as good as the first one or very rarely and yeah. there's like diminishing returns the more you dip into that well so you can kind of only follow the data so much and i think ultimately you still want to be doing something that you find gratifying and enjoyable yeah. So usually when we're coming up with ideas for Drawfee, it's like we we take we find an idea that sounds fun that's been suggested or one that we come up with and then find find what's the most appealing sort of packaging for that idea. Like what what way do we think will make it the most engaging for an audience to view? So usually almost every idea we tweak in some way. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like following the fun and then applying the data to the fun. Got some questions from chat here. I, d I don't have anything to add to that. That's, that sounds like a good answer. Got it in one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, learn from what does poorly, learn from what does good, but also don't ever expect to replicate the exact <clears throat> results on similar stuff because it's constantly changing and yeah definitely follow your interests um for your channel because that's that's what's going to get you to produce the best thing yeah um if someone were uh if someone wanted to make a drawfee style youtube channel uh or just some other art focused channel what type of prep beforehand do you think they should do or what equipment should they invest in that's a good question. Uh, there aren't many people doing Drawfee style YouTube channels, um, which I'm 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 always surprised about, in some way I guess. But the, I'm surprised and then kind of not surprised at the same time. Yeah. Because, in order to do a Drawfee style YouTube channel, you have to have multiple people, who are at a high enough level in art, to like produce art that people want to see but then also have the desire to banter and be funny yeah and also have the chemistry with one another to make that engaging so i guess it's a lot of factors that have to come together for that to work yeah um, but i mean you can there there are tons of art 
YouTube channels. Yeah, a lot of great art YouTube channels. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff. You know, like in terms of equipment, like it depends what sort of media you like to work in. If you want to work digital, like a- I any sort of cheap drawing tablet and uh, and just like screen recording yeah. software works fine if you like working traditional i uh, there are plenty of channels that do like a top down camera where they're just like drawing on on mm-hmm. paper also you can just use your phone for that they have um yeah, you can yeah, buy like, like a, cheap rigs on amazon that can yeah, like support the phone or something yeah. or you know you can put a gopro on your head and draw that way um i definitely yeah, it, recommend when you're starting to get like the cheapest versions of everything yeah because you don't know if you're going to want to continue doing it until you've done it for a while. Yeah. Um, but if you're interested, I think you definitely get like a cheap drawing tablet that's not, you don't need to get a screen one. Um, we all started on, well, I guess, Nathan, you started on a screen tablet, didn't you? I did, yeah. I, uh, but the rest of us did I not. Never, I never was able to square the uh, looking at the screen while drawing not on the screen. It definitely took a lot of getting used to, but... But I had the the I Wacom skipped. bamboo at the time. I skipped that step. But again, it, 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 everyone, pretty much everyone I know who works digitally, like started on one of those except me, and they all figured it out. There are um, some ways where I still think also, those are better. Yeah. Um, better for your posture. Oh yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, if you need if you need a screen one, then like get a screen one. But again, like go for go for the cheapest one first, and see if it's uh what you want to spend a lot of time doing and then if you if you want to upgrade then then upgrade i mean i use i i love my cintiq 22 hd gotten a lot of mileage out of it yeah um but it's it's a multi thousand dollar piece of hardware yeah so and you you build that kind of collection over time like your i think your gear should grow with you how much um, does it cost now? I said multi thousand. Is it? Is I think it's it still... around two thousand. Okay, that that's something. multi. That's multi. Yeah. Cinti um, twenty two. But we had a couple. We had questions in the Twitter too about gear, like recommended gear. Oh, okay. And it's, I, it's like a thousand. It depends where you look. Depends Between where you thousand. look. Between us, a thousand and on on Amazon. There's one for a thousand ninety nine. We don't need all the specific pricing information. It's more just I know. I'm start sorry. small. <laughs> yeah. With what you have, because you don't want to make a huge investment into something that you don't like. By the time we were getting like these Shure mics, which we technically didn't get. But we have bought several Shure mics at this point. The one Nathan yeah. has, we bought, and the mic arm, and the the Rodecaster box, and the stream lights, and the DSLR camera. Like by the time we're getting all that stuff, we're so far in that we know that all these things are going to be used for a long time, yeah. and we'll go on to like then generate us more income. But when that's like less certain, when you're not making money off your channel, unless you just have the disposable income and want to do it, um you can get great results just with whatever screen recording software, whatever tablet, a microphone, like the blue snowball is great and cheap for that or the Yeti. Yeah. The Yeti, Yeti and snowball are good for like, if you're, if you're doing multiple people in the same room, if it's just you, uh, like a single person microphone, I'd recommend the Samson Q2U. It's a nice cheap one and it does really good directional, just like, single single input uh sound yeah and a lot of people just literally do everything with their phone yeah like the they'll phone, record video and audio on phone and like phones it, phones are pretty good these days you already have one of those anyway yeah you can you can get pretty good quality video and sound pro zd does it yeah look at him Again. look at him look at him um he's, he's so good but yeah, I think start small with your gear and then grow it as you grow. Yeah. Um, as your needs grow to meet the the price of the gear and 
in a way that won't make you go bankrupt. Yes. Don't go bankrupt. Don't go bankrupt, please. please. Unless. Please don't go bankrupt and say, Drothy told me to do this. Unless you then make a YouTube video Unless called. Unless you make a YouTube video called, Drothy told me to go bankrupt. <laughs> these these and... YouTubers made me go bankrupt. And then post it in our stream chat with, by saying, someone made a video about you guys. And then we'll watch it and then and you'll then get we'll views. And then you'll get views. Oh no. my God. Wow. No, we never watch videos on our stream. We're not a good streamer to do that to. You have to pick a streamer who watches videos during their streams. Then you can do it. Uh, I'm looking for new questions here. I got a, I got a nice, I got a, a nice easy one from, uh, from Becca. Is it Becca Boo or Becca Bo? Oh, one is the, is the zero to be read as a second O? We we'll have to wait for that. We'll answer. have to wait. Uh, what's your favorite part about being a YouTuber? Oh, I have lots of I favorite can, parts. I can tell you, I can tell you my my favorite uh, my favorite two. I think one of them is probably going to be the same as yours, Jacob, mm -hmm. which is um, getting to have my job be hanging out with. Uh, my cool, talented friends and making them laugh. Yeah, that's definitely one of mine. I like that. It's Boo. Okay, Becca Boo. Okay. Uh, so it's that, and then and th this was uh, highlighted very well uh, this past week when we were in Seattle, but also just from comments and feedback. It, it's uh, I I really like knowing that the thing that I'm doing and spending uh, the majority of my time thinking about and working on uh, makes people happy. Yeah. It's like very cliche, but it does make me feel good when people say the thing you made helped me through a hard time or brightens my day or is something I look forward to. Uh, that like means the world to me absolutely it, i feel incredibly lucky that i get to do something that um i get that immediate feedback on uh it's a it's a really nice reassuring fulfilling thing um so so thank you audience for for saying those things it, yeah, it really, for it sure. really means it really means a lot to me, uh, and is a absolute high highlight of uh, of getting to have this job. I agree with both of those things fully, and they're probably the two biggest ones for me as well. But to name a couple other positives, um, personally, I really like the. Uh, like, I guess the ownership that we have over, Ooh, yeah. like what we make and do in yeah, a way that great. like it, it's risky in a sense because you kind of, it's your own fault, everything yep. that happens, but there's like a really satisfying degree of problem solving of like figuring everything out and making everything work. And, and then like when you have success, that's based on like the group of us all doing something together and and figuring it out together it's just really gratifying to like make and post stuff and be like we just made that out of nowhere and no one told us to and no one told us how to do it it's like we just figured it all out and kind of got it got it made and that's there's like a satisfaction to to just making stuff in that way absolutely and also probably like in the most selfish sense of what's positive about being a YouTuber is that it's just, it, sometimes it's just nice to have a lot of attention. It's nice yeah. to go online and then people go and watch you and yeah. uh, you post things and people watch the things and then yes. you just feel good. It, uh, that, that does feel very good. But only, only it feels good because everyone is so nice. <laughs> yeah. I do not want attention if it's negative attention. No. I, I Some people will take whatever attention they can get. That's yeah, not some me. Some people are, are super good at getting negative attention. It's a whole, it, it definitely, like, it is a path. It is a path to 
building a, something an online i mean people it's People make money doing it. Otherwise, why would so many people do it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you can you can for sure build an audience by being a shit heel, and uh, people will dunk on you. But then, out of every like ten people who are like, "Wow, what an asshole!" One person's like, "You know, I kind of like that asshole. I'm kind of an asshole. I'm, I am that. I am that asshole I'm too. Kind of a, yeah, that asshole is kind of." saying the asshole stuff that i think um we don't yeah. we don't want to do that we don't we don't ever want to do that um but when you're getting attention that's people going i'm having so much fun watching this thing you're doing yeah then that's great that's just a great feeling it just makes that's you just feel really good. nice it's just a nice warm cozy feeling and they're feeling good and you're feeling good everyone's feeling good um and then if there's like, you know, least favorite parts of being a YouTuber. Sometimes we, oh, okay. you just want to be left completely alone. And mm. then it, it can be like it can feel difficult when mm. like pe people just have a lot of access to you and yeah. a lot of knowledge about you. That's true. And sometimes you get that one wrong message on the wrong day. Mm. And it just like totally tanks your your mental health for like the week. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm I'm ruined. A stranger has reached out over the internet and ruined me, <laughs> and they don't even know yeah. they did it. Yeah, it is. It's relinquishing a lot of power to other people. It's they 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 have the power to make me feel really good, and at the same time, they can make me feel like absolute dog shit. Yeah. Luckily, the Drawfee community. 99.99999 percent of the time is making me feel good yes um and you know sometimes there are valid criticisms and i i appreciate those too yeah uh, those are always I, good i'm a i'm a i'm just a human being and i'm not perfect and i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck stuff up sometimes and usually when i do people are very uh chill about being like hey Maybe you don't do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, good that's, point. That's fair. You got me that's, there. That's fair. You got me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I I don't ever want to reach a point in uh, niche internet fame where I'm like, feel too good for criticism. No, um, that's a bad place to be in. Because that, that's when you start saying real, real bad stuff. No, thank you. Uh, no, thanks. But yeah, it's I, I agree with that, that like, yeah, sometimes sometimes you'll see something directed at you that's just like, oh, you didn't have, you didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's mostly really good. Yeah, most uh, most been, of the time we've been super duper fortunate in that regard. Um, so thank thank you all again for, for making this a. a uh, a fun and worthwhile endeavor on our part. Agreed. Because uh, we we couldn't we we couldn't do it without an audience. That's the whole that's the whole dance. We need you. We need you. And I'll I'll admit it freely. Uh, we can probably squeeze in one more. Yeah. One more questione. Let me see what we got here. It's a lot of questions about like the editing process. That could Ooh. probably be a different draw class. Oh yeah, David honestly, a draw class. Yeah, may, let's make David do one. Let's make, make David do more work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David was so great handling the merch table. At our Seattle shows. Yeah. David did a great job. I like David. Same. Uh, okay, what about... I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. You're losing it. Well, we've, we've covered a lot of these in, like, different ways is the yeah. issue. Like, stuff about managing comments and... Um, oh, here's here's one that I have thoughts about from Gabrielle Montez said, would you be willing to touch on how to build a professional presence as a content person on social media 
Also, how do I reach out to people I don't currently know on stuff like Insta slash Twitter in a way that isn't presumptive and actually has the potential to start a conversation? Ooh, this, this is all you because you're much better at this than I am. Well, it's I feel like I had a lot of experience with this because I came up through the independent webcomic world yeah. of Tumblr and I made a lot of mistakes during that time of like trying to reach out to people that were much bigger than me, mm -hmm. which I think everyone, you know, when you don't know what to do, yeah, you can't like see, there's no like roadmap, right? And so you're just like right. trying stuff. Just shooting your shot, yeah. So I would just like, you know, message people or comment on people's things and be like, I hope maybe someday they'll interact with me and then we'll become best friends and then they'll promote <laughs> my work and then, you know, and, and it'll snowball and, and stuff like that. Um, but what ended up being the best help to me coming up, and I think it still is now, is instead of like always looking at the people that are above you and like trying to reach up and interact with them, um, like look to the people who are on your level, like your peers. Yeah, find your community. Because the, the most success I had was like with the people that I just became friends with because they were also making web comics on Tumblr at the time. And they would like, you know, like my stuff and I would like their stuff. And sometimes we would message. And it was all like people with around the same like following size that I had. Yeah. Um, and so then when like, you know, if I got a boost and got bigger, I'm still, you know, reblogging their stuff because they're still my friend. Yeah. And vice versa. If one of them like gets a big boost, they're reblogging my stuff. And then we're kind of all growing together. And because a, we have like a camaraderie rather than like a transactional relationship. Exactly. It's a much more genuine connection you've made because you were at the same place when you started. And like, it's likely that, you know, if you if you cast a wide net and make connections with people who are around the same place as you, who are also entering this this creative space, trying to make interesting stuff, someone you 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 reach out to and become friends with might end up hitting it big and then you've got that actual like genuine connection with them that you formed before it was like you know obviously oh i'm just reaching out to this person with a bigger platform to try and get a boost yeah um you know yeah totally totally that so you kind of um, just have to approach it from a direction of i just want to have friends in my field and uh, rather than like, I want to get on the radar of someone with a big following. So you're just making friends the normal way. It's still not easy. But, you know, what is? <laughs> Nothing's easy. <laughs> Welcome to the real world, kid. Nothing's easy. And then, of course, there's like always exceptions like... um. Like if you're just making genuinely like cool stuff, if you make, you know, for example, if you're a if you're an animator, and you make like a like an animation, a fan animation of someone uh, with a larger following than you, and it's like really good, they might like it. Yeah, I mean that's why we're we're always talking about Deep Blue Ink. Deep Blue Ink is is great. It's it, it's criminal how how few uh youtube subs they have more subs to, for deep blue ink i want everyone to sub to deep blue ink this is my demand so yeah but again like they didn't reach out with like anything sort of like sweaty or transactional they were just like you know they were they were making mcelroy fan content and then all of a sudden hey that's that's me that's me in there. That's video. me on there. I've seen those videos pop up because I'm a fan of McElroy content. They show up in my recommended, but like, wait a minute, that's me. That's me in there. And yeah. so then I, you know, I, I reached out to them just to be like, that's awesome. Like, that's great. I support them on Patreon. Like they're, they're making good stuff. So that, that's another way is just to like, yeah, like fan art too. If you're not make, an animator, make undeniably good stuff. <laughs> that is uh that is um shows you're a fan of of something else that's bigger just make undeniably good stuff it's easy is just make stuff so just, good that no one can dislike it <laughs> i mean that's the it's like 
it's it's stupid to say but it's also true yeah it it is it's like (laughs) be undeniable like that's some i i remember back when i was like just starting at college humor and i was just listening to like comedy podcasts or whatever like i remember i remember hearing that and it's like such a it's such a like cocky cliche like unachievable thing to say but it's also true yeah (laughs) it's like yeah like that should be that should be your you know your guiding like, like every so often you know most of the stuff i make i think is pretty good but every so often i'll make something that i'm like damn that was actually pretty pretty good yeah like this is something that anyone could look at this and they would be like it's like in the the disney episode with your your (laughs) meowgly it was like we all looked at it and we were like damn this looks like some disney shit like this looks like a disney animator drew this I feel like yeah. sometimes, you know, when, when we're really in the mood, we'll drop something like that. Yeah. And it's like anyone who saw this would be like, that's really good. That's just good art. Yeah. Like there are lots of, because obviously you can't be undeniably great the majority of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, you know, these are, there are lots of, of tools and tricks and, and things you can do to, to, to give yourself a, a boost, you know, be intentional about like what you're trying to do and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you can, you can skip all that if you're just undeniably really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best advice we've ever given. Uh, so, you know, hone your craft, whatever that is. Uh, you know, don't, don't rest on your laurels. Like I think Griffin McElroy said, like, there's no, when when you're making something and it's completely yours there's no limit to the amount of work you can put into something um and so you know it's about it's about balancing that with like your your time and energy um yeah but like if you if you've got some in you that you got to you got to get out there and you have the time, like make it the best you can. And then and then make the next one even better, you know? There you go. That's good advice. Make it make a YouTube channel. And and yeah, and del- delude yourself into thinking that you can and then maybe you will. Yeah, you have to delude yourself. That's key. You have to you have to constantly be telling yourself I got a million of these in me. Yeah. You make a video, it's the best video you've ever made. You've got a million more ready to go, waiting. <laughs> in the chamber. You. Yeah. That's just how you have to approach it. You have to be a little bit... Um, stupid. You have to be a little bit stupid. You have to sort of show an protagonist yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I, I firmly believe that. Yeah. I don't think any of us would have these jobs we have now if you didn't uh, go a little bit stupid in the head. Yeah. And, you know, and also constantly check in with yourself and don't burn yourself out and take breaks and be good to yourself and take care of your mental health. All that stuff is super important. That stuff's Um, always just assume that if we're talking about anything that is unspoken in the background, it's like if all of that, it's like an if then statement, like if all of that is is taken care of, then all this other shit we're saying. Um, but that's that's the end of the stream. I feel like this was a good one. We had a lot of good good discussion, good talks. Yeah. I hope it was helpful to people. And well, right now we we will only know if it was helpful to nine people. Yeah. But the future. But the in the future, already, yeah. If they've reached this part of the video, the future has already sent us back so many cryptic warnings. I bet. Yeah. And so we're gonna go through those we're after this those and see where now. we messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thanks again to the the patrons at the learner tier. We really appreciate yeah, your, thank you so much. your generosity and for your support. And if you're interested, if you're watching this later, you're interested in catching one of these live, uh, you can bump up to the learner tier for a month if there's like a subject that really interests you. Yep, we announce um, what the subject is ahead of time. So you, you'll always have time in that month to do it. Yeah. And then you can, and then you can bop back down if uh, if you just wanted the one. 
Bop wherever you want. Bop wherever you want. Take care of your finances. It's hard out here, but we appreciate all the help and all the support. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next time. We're sorry. Sorry. <laughs>